Richard Middleton, A Memory by Henry Savage Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson Although most of Richard Middleton's work appeared in various journals of his day, it is not surprising that his name is still practically unknown. The end doubtless would have been served by the publication of a book in his lifetime, but this apart, few people are interested in poetry, and very few know poetry when they see it. He was, again, poor, and but for certain friends with a more or less deep sense of his value, the adventure of literature would have been even more difficult. Occasional articles and reviews for the Academy were followed by more settled work on Vanity Fair, in which paper were published many of his poems. Later, he resumed his earlier connection and wrote also for the English Review. The last nine months of his life he spent in Brussels, dying there at the age of twenty-nine. He was of striking appearance. His unfashionable thick beard and long hair, his massive deeply lined forehead and fine eyes, compelled attention. But to me, at least, he is chiefly memorable for a certain air of simple dignity and sense of self-respect. In earlier days, intolerant of fools, he grew to be more patient, and had he lived would, I think, have suffered fools gladly. The genuine kindness, the gentleness and benignity of the man, laterally, was remarkable. Under his care, and almost isolated as he was in Brussels, the old pagan spirit of the poems was changing. He was becoming more humane. In one of his later letters, I grew a little warmer, he wrote to men and women in general, and in another letter, I feel drawn toward young children and people who are simple and kindly and not too clever. They give me a glimpse of the life that I have missed in my passionate search for enjoyment. Certainly he would not have written any more poems like his Irene. Indeed, in his last year he wrote scarcely any poetry at all, devoting himself to prose. With his contemporaries he had but little in common. They were, he considered, for the most part, propagandists. Propagartists, he called them. Moralists, reformers, anything but what he would have had them be, lovers of beauty. Of the poets he at one time greatly admired, Mr. A. E. Hausman, but admitted later that the distinctive bitter flavor of the Shropshire lad was against its being of the highest quality. Mr. Kenneth Graham is the author with whom he was most in sympathy. When his essays are collected, it will be found that he shares with Mr. Graham and Stevenson the rare gift of evoking the thoughts and feelings of childhood. With young people he was always on terms of equality. Hearing of his death, I cannot possibly tell the children, wrote a friend. We all had a real affection for him, and here he was always at his best such was the man of his genius i am not using words idly when i say that it is of that rare quality which will sooner or later ensure him a recognized position in the front rank of english poets those who are not moved by the beauty of the poetry in this volume may find beauty elsewhere and had better seek it elsewhere there is that in it beyond the reach of mere criticism it is of that substance which lives End of Richard Middleton, A Memory, by Henry Savage. This recording is in the public domain. In Memoriam, by Richard Middleton, read for LibriVox.org, by Larry Wilson. Now in this somber and regretful place, Gray when the sun has crimsoned all the west, With sorrow like a mask upon my face, I lay my dreams to rest. Poor dreams that are as many as my days. Poor days that are as many as my dreams. The spring once gave you all his roundelays, the harvest moon her beams. This one was wet with delicate gray rain, and this sang ballads to an amber moon, and this set tender harmonies of pain to a delicious tune. All fallen into dust, Ah, God, that I had stayed unknowing in my first glad bed, if thus beneath the drear and desolate sky I had not laid my dead. 
End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Chant Pagan by Richard Middleton, read for LibriVox.org by Eva Davis. Chant Pagan Lay down your sword of thunder, you little gods of wonder. We have sought young love in the world above, and the earth is rent asunder. By lightning you may blind him, and in his darkness bind him. By flower and sod on the steps of God we shall seek young love and find him and heaven's dimmest rafter shall tremble to our laughter while we leave our tears to your hopeless years though there be nothing after and while your day uncloses its lorn and tattered roses we shall pluck the stars from your prison bars and bind celestial posies an hour to heap our treasure and tread our careless measure an hour of dreams where the rainbow gleams and the moonlight takes its pleasure an hour to find what bliss is in freer worlds than this is an hour to lie twixt earth and sky and conquer time with kisses step down from your high places you gods of fallen races by field and flood our pagan blood shall mock you to your faces by craven fear begotten your musty bones grow rotten by night and day, when wise men pray, your creeds shall be forgotten. No son of man shall fear you, no woman shall come near you. Your lips may cry from your riven sky, and the lover shall not hear you. Lay down your sword of thunder, you little gods of wonder. We have sought our love in the world above, and your veil is rent asunder. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Bathing Boy by Richard Middleton Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo The Bathing Boy I saw him standing idly on the brim Of the quick river, in his beauty clad. So fair he was that nature looked at him and touched him with her sunbeams here and there, so that his cool flesh sparkled, and his hair blazed like a crown above the naked lad. And so I wept, I have seen lovely things, maidens and stars, in roses all anod, in moonlit seas but love without his wings, set in the azure of an august sky, was all too fair for my mortality, and so I wept to see the little god. Till with a sudden grace of silver skin, In golden lock he dived, His song of joy broke with the bubbles As he bore them in, And lo, the fear of night was on that place, Till decked with new-found gems and flushed a face, He rose again, a laughing, choking boy. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. On a Dead Child by Richard Middleton Read for LibriVox.org by Eva Davis On a Dead Child Man proposes, God in his time disposes. And so I wandered up to where you lay, A little rose among the little roses, And no more dead than they. It seemed your childish feet were tired of straying. You did not greet me from your flower-strewn bed, Yet still I knew that you were only playing, playing at being dead. I might have thought that you were really sleeping, so quiet lay your eyelids to the sky. So still your hair, but surely you were peeping, and so I did not cry. God knows, and in his proper time disposes, and so I smiled and gently called your name added my rose to your sweet heap of roses, and left you to your game. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Carol of the Poor Children by Richard Middleton Read for LibriVox.org by Sandra Schmidt
the carol of the poor children we are the poor children come out to see the sights on this day of all days on this night of nights the stars in merry parties are dancing in the sky a fine star a new star is shining on high we are the poor children our lips are frosty blue we cannot sing our carol as well as rich folk do our bellies are so empty we have no singing voice but this night of all nights good children must rejoice we do rejoice we do rejoice as hard as we can try a fine star a new star is shining in the sky and while we sing our carol we think of the delight the happy kings and shepherds make in bethlehem to-night are we naked mother and are we starving poor oh see what gifts the kings have brought outside the stable door are we cold mother the ass will give his hay to make the manger warm and keep the cruel winds away we are the poor children but not so poor who sing our carol with our voiceless hearts to greet the newborn king on this night of all nights when in the frosty sky a new star a kind star is shining on high end of poem this recording is in the public domain the unknown road by richard middleton read for LibriVox.org by sonia the unknown road the road crept gaily from the town and all the knights adventurous were riding up and riding down ay all the gallant warriors whose hopeful hearts may god befriend along the road without an end right well they fared yet on the way that young hearts all sing eagerly were some who wrought in colours gay at painted boards and tapestries this is the road to love they said and this the pavement of the dead the knights felt sad which way they cried now may we go adventurous not to the courts of love we ride nor to the mouth of sepulchres not for our hearts were these things shown which seek for god the great unknown now they about their eyes have tied the scarfs of youth invincible and down the laughing road they ride in places dark and dangerous seeking the ways no man has trod to justify their swords to god and so it seems the thing doth fare with men of mind adventurous the critics labour everywhere with cunning hand unwavering what time regardless of their light the poets wander in the night end of poem this recording is in the public domain the last cruise by richard middleton read for LibriVox.org by larry wilson the stars were out overhead and lo i cried nevermore nevermore shall the palace know me and high on the mast the white sails trembled as skyward the good ship bore her cargo of shadows never a word of regret as i stood on her moonlit poop and sang not of old past things but of wonders to be and saw great birds with a glory of plumage swoop down the sea's meadows ah the wind on my forehead that might not blow on the earth surely the gates were open and i might forget the quiet eyes of the past that seemed life's worth that were but seeming i saw the lights of a ship march slowly over the sea and the land fell away behind me and into the night that covereth all things and passeth no more for me my heart went dreaming end of poem this recording is in the public domain the song of the king's minstrel by richard middleton read for librivox dot org by sandra schmidt the song of the king's minstrel i sing no longer of the skies and the swift clouds like driven ships for there is earth upon my eyes 
and earth between my singing lips because the king loved not my song that he had found so sweet before i lie at peace the whole night long and sing no more the king liked well my song that night upon the palace roof he lay with his fair queen and as i might i sang until the morning's grey crept over their faces and the king mocked by the breaking dawn above clutched at his youth and bade me sing a song of love well it might be the king was old and though his queen was passing fair his dull eyes might not catch the gold that tangled in her wayward hair it had been much to see her smile but with my song i made her weep our heavens last but a little while so now i sleep more than the pleasures that i had i would have flung away to know my song of love could make her sad her sweet eyes fill and tremble so what were my paltry store of years my body's wretched life to stake against the treasure of her tears for my love's sake not lightly is the king made wise my body ached beneath his whips and there is earth upon my eyes and earth between my singing lips but i sang once and for that grace i am content to lie and store the vision of her dear wet face and sing no more end of poem this recording is in the public domain the rebel by richard middleton read for LibriVox.org by nemo the rebel i am the man who wandered in the skies to a strange place hung round with flowing silk wherein were set the stars from north to south and there i saw a god with dreamy eyes and monstrous shadowing beard that dripped with milk and there was honey on his drooping mouth then i rejoiced to see him newly fed because his forehead shone without a fold while his vast chest beat out the pulse of years i come for tidings of the newly dead i cried and flung before him all my gold and all my pitiful prayings and my tears the god dreamed on and all about him swayed the starry tapestries and in their deep i saw new planets quicken and burn dim but i had loved and i was unafraid and while the fat god panted in his sleep and snorted centuries i hated him will you not wake o oh god because he calls who for your sake has knelt beneath the sky and for the sake of her but newly dead but still the stars held mazy festivals in universes throb melodiously and still the god down drooped his drowsy head and so because he would not heed my prayer i turned on him with laughter as he lay and mocked him for a whittle to his face and laughing swept the field of heaven bare and as the long night trembled into day i set myself upon a throne in space and a poem this recording is in the public domain the flower girl by richard middleton read for LibriVox.org by recording person the flower girl i stand here all the day calling my roses under a sunny sky oh will you buy my pretty posies my lords and ladies gay thirteen summers are dead with all their roses now cry i down the street oh buy my sweet my pretty posies my flowers white and red the wind sings all the day swaying my roses oh come my little one come heed the sun and drop your posies my little one and play i bend my weary head down to my roses he would not be unkind the gentle wind my pretty posies but oh that i were dead and still i stand all day calling my roses so old so old am i oh will you buy my pretty posies my lords and ladies gay End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.
Lullaby by Richard Middleton, read for LibriVox.org by B. Heath. She can be found at Bankerism.com. Ah, little one, you're tired of play. Sleep's fingers rest upon your brow. You've been a woman all the day. You'd be a baby now. Oh, baby, my baby, you'd be my baby now. Perhaps you had forgotten me, because the daisies were so white. But now you come to mother's knee, my little babe tonight. Oh, baby, my baby, my baby every night. Tomorrow, when the sun's awake, you'll seek your flowery fields again. But night shall fall, and for my sake, you'll be a baby then. Oh, baby, my baby, my little baby then. And you'll grow big, and love will call. Happen you'll leave me for your man. And night times, when the shadows fall, I'll greet as mothers can. Oh, baby, my baby, as only mothers can. And now, my little heart of May, lie closely, sleep is on your brow. You've been a woman all the day. You'd be my baby now. Oh, baby, my baby, my little baby now. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Adrift by Richard Middleton. Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. Oh, the days, the angry days, hot on all the watery ways, and the night that gave us only stars to make the whole world lonely. Weary heart and weary head, all too weary to be dead, we as children seeking shadows danced along the sea's green meadows. Always would the hours unfold, endless days of ghastly gold, and the sun that might not pity triumphed o'er the golden city. Where we wandered maze on maze, street on street of heat and haze, sung by bells in every quarter, and their song was water, water. We with black and muttering lips called to dreamy far-off ships. When they passed, we peering after, cackled forth in dreamy laughter till time vanished and hope done and beneath the ringing sun our shrunk bodies blazed and embered lo a sail god had remembered oh the days the empty days down along the watery ways and the nights that gave us only stars to make the whole world lonely end of poem this recording is in the public domain To Lily by Richard Middleton, read for LibriVox.org by Recording Person. To Lily, the black trees lean towards their starry god, and murmur to me in the dreamy light, while I stoop down to pluck the lilies white that grow wherever your glad feet have trod. O oh, my beloved, my song is of the night. Cool on my forehead, underneath the sky, the soft wind blows, and in the dew wet grass, the lilies cluster. Where your feet did pass, cluster and dance to me, but never die, for I've borne them to my treasury, even to my fair treasury of dreams, where all I have of you is garnered fast, moonlit and sunlit lilies of the past, spoil of dead stars, to speak of love it seems, even in that great dream which is the last. For they shall sway about me in that place, wherein my soul shall lay my body down, and all along the streets of death's grey town, their scent shall bear remembrance of your grace, and where they triumph, I shall see your face. O oh, my beloved, my song is of the night, the quiet night with dewy eyes that weep, for very gladness on the lilies white, which cluster in the dreams of my delight, and whisper love across the hills of sleep. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Glad Nights of Spring by Richard Middleton Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo The Glad Nights of Spring We are the men who make the world a song For all the children of the world to sing We are the lonely rulers of the spring Dreaming upon our thrones the whole night long Till high upon the eastern hills there glows The summer like a rose and while in dim forgotten graves there sleep if god grant lightly those who long ago danced to the loving winds of spring they know that on the dying hours 
our watch we keep to welcome back across the midnight airs no other love than theirs her voice is like the song of hidden streams laughing at dusk her feet are wet with dew her eyes are set with god's eternal blue she is the perfect lady of our dreams and far across the night and far and far we seek her like a star there is no resting place for tired head like her soft breast there is no love like hers and ever on her gentle lips there stirs a triumphing song that comforted the dead over their graves the dewy trees shine wet but they may not forget we are the rulers of the quiet hours who love where loved the dead and in our hands we hold the keys of fair untrodden lands where summer comes not to perplex the flowers but spring stays ever and spring music fills the dark and dreamy hills and a poem this recording is in the public domain to dorothy by richard middleton read for librivox.org by recording person to dorothy the night has sprinkled all the woods with dew stars wink in grassy places and the trees bend down their sodden mournful heads where through rare night birds thrill their harsh discordancies and far upon the silent hills there roll strange shapes of mist and soft bewildered things beat on my shrinking face with noisome wings but there are noonday revels in my soul beyond the sombre woods your window shines gold for the night and morning for my eyes and to my passion's love enchanted winds have touched with crimson all the midnight skies when far across the dismal earth there steals your sunlight sweetness there were no more day though from his beaten pavements far away the summer sun drove his fierce chariot wheels o oh, love look forth for i have crossed the night the bitter night full many a weary mile i have made careless songs for your delight and plucked my dreams apart to dare your smile i have flung all my treasure in your way that it might thrill to dust beneath your feet but night is near me now and oh my sweet my very love look forth and give me day end of poem this recording is in the public domain to c m by richard middleton read for librivox dot org by nemo to c m dear dreamer with the wonderful wide eyes you are not mine to love nor may i know under what star beneath what passionate skies your feet exulting go but i have seen your eyes made bold with tears and love rebuke the rebellious hemispheres i know i am as nothing in your place of sombre love and strange magnificent flowers but i have loosed your hair about my face to which my midnight hours and i have dreamed that your sweet tears are shed on me at dawn when i bring forth my dead my feet across the threshold of your shrine whence your love's incense to the stars is curled may wander not but for this peace of mine o oh, laugh away my world and let me see beneath the enchanted skies spring and your lover hold their revelries o oh, let me hear you speak to him and share though none of mine the reticent sweet song the charms your sleep-bound courts in cities where your glad dream courtiers throng to greet across the vision paved ways your starlit nights your fair desirous days there is a bitterness in love for me for every kiss shall burn my flesh with fire i am a prince of thwarted ecstasy of unassuaged desire yet would i know your new bewitched skies dear dreamer and your passionate wide eyes and a poem this recording is in the public domain christine by richard middleton read for librivox dot org by nemo christine how cold she is and yet that shade of her who fills my dreams 
with sensuous images has veins of warmer quicker blood than these who yield me their affections might i stir the secret pool that is her heart and blur with ringed ripples the tranquillities which are a deathly glass to one who sees his own swart soul where truth and wonder were would love unfold his wings and fan my face with the odorous winds of dreams made animate and wondered things become the things that are or should i turn and seek another place while from the broken halls and desolate she wandered forth to greet the morning star and a poem this recording is in the public domain To H.S. by Richard Middleton Read for LibriVox.org by Recording Person To H.S. Love is life's enemy for we who hold Within our dreams our passionate carouse Count not dawn's silver or the sunset's gold Winning dim jewels for our vision house While all the noontime blossoms lose their scent And all life's flowers droop their faded heads we gather roses from celestial beds and lilies from the starlit firmament and being born of dreams they shall not die for though the dreamers perish these shall wake earth with their fragrant immortality and on the hills their lovely buds shall break well of our dreams new lovers dreams shall be and in our night time they shall find their rest watching the sun pass down into the west stained by the wine of our old ecstasy we saw the new-made stars dance forth above and we shall see them flicker out and die we are but moments in the tide of love yet are we one with love's eternity and when the immortal wearies of his moods and is no more our song shall capture still the place of timeless silences and fill with grateful rapture the cold solitudes end of poem this recording is in the public domain. At the Gates by Richard Middleton Read for LibriVox.org by Eva Davis At the Gates How long, how long, O night, The delicate fabric of the stars is frayed Where dawn lets in the light, And in the scented glade The thrushes thread day's lattices and sing the end of your impassioned sorrowing i see your glittering tears scattered upon the lawn's awakening green the bitter knowledge of the bitter years since ever love has been lies in your deep kind breast and with the day you mourn poor human love that dies all way how long how long o night across your hours i have fulfilled the task of my delight I have one rapturous lethargy of flowers. But day unfolds, and I shall keep my song. How long, O oh night! O oh wanton love, how long! End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Under the Whip by Richard Middleton. Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo under the whip it well may be that death is god's last boon for with the hours life's tapestry is blurred to strange unshapen nothings i have heard eve in the twilight singing to the moon the passionate song that has no human tune and some fierce echo in my bosom stirred greeting the cry as an imprisoned bird the piping of the day o oh, death be soon for there's nothing left in life but this and to the scarlet shrine is beauty fled since paradise grew earth and men were wise but who can breathe beneath your final kiss love and who would not rather be well dead than feed the torment in your laughing eyes and a poem this recording is in the public domain.
the ballad of the bacchanals by richard middleton read for LibriVox.org by sonia the ballad of the bacchanals while yet above the western hills the sun was red they came to me and cried your fame the city fills for cunning song and minstrelsy and at your peril it were well to bring us ere to-morrow falls a song new fashioned out of hell to crown our autumn bacchanals they passed the sun went down like flame and from her high acropolis the queen of all the kisses came to quench my loving avarice she kissed my singing lips away i cried o oh love whatever befalls i have a song to sing ere day a song to crown the bacchanals now far above our loving place rode forth the star accoutred night and by her side i saw the face of sleep her tender acolyte in some high arbor of the moon we held our wanton festivals and wonder set our lips atune to crown the autumn bacchanals while yet upon her lips i lay dreaming in exquisite suspense i saw the chariot of day across the eastern battlements and cried oh truly love is long for even now the daylight calls and for my love i have no song to crown the autumn bacchanals but she said for my beauty's sake anoint my soul with kisses yet this is a better song we make than any that the gods forget and while the accursed sun upclimbed to steal the stars the city walls our loving hearts exulting rhymed the ballad of the bacchanals they led us forth beneath the sky the abundant earth would have its own and yet it was not hard to die with love for a companion they led us forth towards the sea and there beyond the city walls we sang beneath the gallows tree the ballad of the bacchanals end of poem this recording is in the public domain the pirate ship by richard middleton read for LibriVox.org by sonia the pirate ship we fought her in the dark until her spars touched the black heart of night with fairy gold and she flung largesse to the pitying stars the fragrant incense of her teeming hold it seemed as though the very sea was glad decking its bosom with a thousand gems while the air swarmed with fireflies dancing mad about her masts enchanted diadems upon our decks the dead men watched the sky with wonder in their faces and her crew cursed in the shadows of their misery the sombre wind that to the gallows blew while from the torment of the sanguine smoke one called on pity by her tender name until across the disordered sea there broke the light of morning bitter sick with flame our cheeks were pale the blood upon our hands crumbled to purple dust our tired eyes held visions of our pleasant meadowlands leaping to-day beneath the kentish skies no new wind soothed strained brow and bitten lip the morning lay upon us for a shroud while over the sea the ember of a ship breathing thin smoke passed landwards like a cloud last eve across a mad and crimson sea i saw the sun plunge down into the night even as a flaming vessel and on me there fell the glory of an ancient fight end of poem this recording is in the public domain new love by richard middleton read for LibriVox.org by Nima. new love the boy weeps in the wild woods his bright eyes are sore the old inhuman solitudes may shield his heart no more a maid has happened out of hell and kissed his crimson lips too well where may he hide his miseries where quench the lips that burn for scarlet love the tangled trees bramble and gorse and fern can hide him not nor may he cool 
his mouth in any forest pool love laughs about the groves of pine pan wantons in the glade and the boy is drunk with a new wine and the boy's heart is afraid her lips were soft and very kind her breath was like a summer wind oh wanton night made glad with dew hung with a starry veil the boy is lost for loving you the old enchantments fail you have led his feet to hell's gate to a crimson dawn and passionate no more in leafy solitudes god's paved fields among he shall win the peace of the wild woods with the joy of his quiet song for love has found the groves of pine and the boy is drunk with a new wine end a poem this recording is in the public domain on a dead youth by richard middleton read for librivox dot org by eva davis on a dead youth the boy dreams lays down before his god a rosebud's worth and far above the shrine a planet gleams no more of earth and at his side the maidens may not weep lest it should break his sleep all his spring flowers beneath their feet lie dead dear boy and love was never a word he used though for their faces all his tears were shed and all his roses bruised better it was ere shame were kissed awake to perish for their sake and with soft fingers they shall pity death and close his lovely eyes and they shall warm his body with their breath stir heaven with their sighs for life shall give them other lips to kiss but none so sweet as this and then with mournful wonder they shall go love's wings are furled and well they know that they shall never know the meaning of the world but some dim thing within their bosom cries and adonis dies the boy dreams why should we weep for him who wakes no more the kisses shall not burn for him it seems the frail heart's core though on the hills the lonely maidens call love to his festival end of poem this recording is in the public domain to irene by richard middleton read for librivox dot org by eva davis to irene i think the earth was dead last night for i keeping you in my arms could feel no breath from all the slumberous trees it seemed that death had wooed the fields for in our ecstasy they had no part and where the thrushes flew in drowsy autumn now no creature moved across the fallen leaves save where we loved and there i heard faint wings discover you and then you thrilled with some supreme desire that was not of my dreams your pulses beat time to the world and with rebellious feet your triumphing passion scaled the gates of fire and lo i was as dust in some far place my soul paid tribute to tremendous kings who bowed their head before your gleaming wings and praised your beauty with averted face love is too great for me from this dead world wherein i hold a child's uncertainties i may not dare the glamour of his skies scatheless nor see his magic wings unfurled the dead men clamour round me and i know i am no more than they who may not keep the secret hours that are too glad for sleep with love that stays and dreams that laughing go End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Happy Cruise by Richard Middleton. Read for LibriVox.org by Eva Davis. The Happy Cruise. Where silver waters flow, we cool our burning lips, 
and where the honey drips upon the earth below from flowers white with snow we load our dreamy ships till when the red sun dips stars blossom thus we go the girls are flushed with wine and singing in the shade and wanton words invade their delicate mouths that pine through kissing of the vine and every golden maid loves though she be betrayed the stars the stars that shine gladly the rigging sings but oh how glad are we lords of the dreaming sea and of delicious things we are more rich than kings or any men that be well down eternity we beat with shadowy wings and thus our watch we keep upon the summer sky lives fade and droop and die and yet we do not weep who sail the starry deep with but one human cry quietly quietly the girls are all asleep end of poem this recording is in the public domain dust of dreams by richard middleton read for LibriVox.org by eva davis dust of dreams the moon across the world of gentler light down to the morning drives her starry teams while i enrich the treasury of night with purple robes and jewels wrought in dreams for while upon the dying hours i keep my sleepless watch upon my soul there falls rest beyond rest sleep that is more than sleep love from your castle walls and through the hours of night the jewelled foam torn by the winds from the adventurous seas flies back before my galleons driving home to heap their treasure on the magic quays i may not sleep till high upon their spars i see the pale hand of the morning gleam i need not sleep for love has won the stars to make the world my dream o oh, love o oh, dream if ever i awake in some sad place of life may i arise and win forgetfulness for your sweet sake and dare the night once more with open eyes with open eyes and cold and heaven above shall know i do not dream though yet i store dream beyond dream love that is more than love mine till i dream no more End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Tears by Richard Middleton. Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. Tears. If these be tears that fill my eyes with rumor of a thousand stars, until my tired mind unbars its sombre portals to the skies, to find in each enchanted light that thrills along the heavenly way a golden glory more than day a wonder far beyond the night weep on o oh heart it well may be that these sad eyes were made to weep to find what others find in sleep within a teardrop's brilliancy and it may be these pools of fire that earth and sea and heaven guard shall prove my ultimate reward the jewels that surpass desire end of poem this recording is in the public domain the song of the glad woman by richard middleton read for librivox dot org by sonia the song of the glad woman i saw a boy a pretty boy who wandered in the woodlands wild it made my bosom leap for joy to see the child the lovely child and yet he wept and would not play and all the birds made moan above with well a day and well a day ah well a day for love i held him to my yearning breast and with my pity lulled his fears and there he lay and took his rest while on my face there fell his tears they burned my beauty quite away 
till all the birds made moan above with well a day and well a day ah well a day for love no morning dew can heal the smart where fell his kisses on my brow he weeps no more upon my heart it is my heart that's weeping now he was so sweet he might not stay and all the birds make moan above with well a day and well a day ah well a day for love yet i rejoice that in an hour i saw the boy the pretty boy for he has given me the power that out of sorrow bringeth joy and so i shall not him gainsay though all the birds make moan above with well a day and well a day ah well a day for love End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Autumnal by Richard Middleton. Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. Autumnal. Across the scented garden of my dreams, where roses grew, time passes like a thief. Among my trees, his silver sickle gleams. The grass is stained with many a ruddy leaf and on cold winds the petals float away that were the pride of june and her array the bare boughs weave a net upon the sky to catch love's wings and his fair body bruise there are no flowers in the rosary no songbirds in the mournful avenues though on the sodden air not lightly breaks the elegy of youth whom love forsakes ah time one flower of all my garden spare one rose of all the roses that in this i may possess my love's perfumed hair and all the crimson secrets of her kiss grant me one rose that i may drink its wine and from her lips win the last anodyne for i have learned too many things to live and i have loved too many things to die but all my barren acres i would give for one red blossom of eternity to animate the darkness and delight the spaces and the silences of night but dreams are tender flowers that in their birth are very near to death and i shall reap who planted wonder unavailing earth harsh thorns and miserable husks of sleep i have had dreams but have not conquered time and love shall vanish like an empty rhyme end of poem this recording is in the public domain dream song by richard middleton read for LibriVox.org by b heath she can be found at binkerism.com i come from woods enchanted starlit and pixie haunted where twixt the bracken and the trees the goblins lie and take their ease by winter moods undaunted they're down the golden gravel the laughing rivers travel elves wake at night and whisper low between the bracken and the snow their dreamings to unravel twisted and lank and hairy with wanton eyes and wary they stretch and chuckle in the wind for one has found a mermaid kind and one has kissed a fairy they know no melancholy but fashion crowns of holly and gather sleep within the brake to deck the kingdom when they wake and bless the dreamer's folly ah would that i might follow the servants of apollo but it is sweet to heap the hours with quiet dreams and poppy flowers down in the pixie's hollow end of poem this recording is in the public domain for he had great possessions by richard middleton read for librivox dot org by nema for he had great possessions ah marvel not if when i come to die and follow death the way my fancies went year after fading year the last mad sky finds me impenitent for though my heart went doubting through the night with many a backward glance at heaven's face yet found i many treasures of delight within this pleasant place i shall not grieve because the girls were fair and kinder than the world 
nor shall i weep because with crying lips and clinging hair they stole away my sleep for lacking this i might not yet have known how high the heart could climb or waking seen the mountains bear their silver breast of stone from their chaste robes of green though it were all a sin within the mirth and pain of life i found a song above our songs in her who scattered on the earth her glad largesse of love as though she held some dream that was not ours in some far place that was not for our feet or blew across the gladder matter flowers a wind more bitter sweet ah who shall hearten when the music stops for joy of silence while they dreamed above she showed me love upon the mountain tops and in the valleys love and while the wise found heaven with their charts and lore of souls she made an earth for me more sweet than all and from our beating hearts she called the pulsing sea so marvel not if in the days when death shall make my body mine i do not cry for hours and treasure lost but with my breath praise my mortality for lo this place is fair and losing all that i have won and dreamed beneath her kiss i would not see the light of morning fall on any world but this End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. Lament for Lillian by Richard Middleton. Read for LibriVox.org by Alex Inigo. I bow my head before the hands of fate and dream no more and reap no more of song. I have denied my destiny too long. I have achieved my punishment too late. For I, in vanished, unforgotten hours, such little hands, such shining eyes have known, that, lacking these, I may not sing alone, in this sad place of salt and withered flowers. And this is life, and these, dear God, are men, these pale, thin shades. Long since by my dream's grace, the dawn wind blew her hair across her face, and there was rapture in the morning then. Her eyes shone darkly in the silken net, flung slantwise o'er her face. Her glad lips said, You will remember Lily when she's dead. And this is life, would God I might forget. Beneath her feet the green earth rolled away, from sea to sea, and I might understand, the water song, the music of the land, the lingering choruses of night and day that gave me, with the dole of childish tears, the knowledge of my blood's supreme delight, the yearning of the morning for the night, the timeless passion of the hemispheres. My love was more than any life of mine, and more than me before its sudden gleam. The years that knew me faded like a dream. I was as one who drinks enchanted wine to sport with gods, and yet there shone for me across my madness lily laughing wise a human blossom glad for human eyes made pagan by a child's serenity ah lord of love these are my eyes that weep these are my lips that do lament her so mourning the little feet that long ago made echoes echoes in the halls of sleep with such delight of dance as children keep when spring has strewed the daisy fields with snow to such soft music as the children know greeting the spring upon the hills a peep if she were dead surely in dreamy ways her tender spirit would delight me still with gifts of lilies tall and fair and fill with silver blossoms my unhappy days and through the meadows where the moon astir binds the wet flowers and garlands with her beams to deck the brows of sleep across my dreams down to the morning i would follow her for I am lord of all fair things that death has fashioned into dreams, and all his art would only bring more surely to my heart. My wondrous lily, sweet with flowers' breath, who now in alien palaces enchants youth 
with her laughing lips and shining eyes, and treads no more beneath the summer skies, the somber forests that Apollo haunts. Song is no tribute to a singing girl, for whom the wanton earth makes madrigals, to whom each wistful star at twilight calls, in tuneful numbers from the heavenly whirl. So here's an end, I ask forgetfulness, now that my little store of hours is spent, and heart to laugh upon my punishment. Dear God, what means a poet, more or less? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Pagan Epitaph by Richard Middleton, read for LibriVox.org by Eva Davis. Pagan Epitaph Servant of the eternal must, I lie here. Here let me lie, in the ashes and the dust, dreaming, dreaming pleasantly. When I lived I sought no wings, schemed no heaven, planned no hell but content with little things made an earth and it was well song and laughter food and wine roses roses red and white and a star or two to shine on my dewy world at night lord what more could i desire with my little heart of clay i have lit no eternal fire to burn my dreams on judgment day well i loved but they who knew what my laughing heart could be what my singing lips could do lie a-dreaming here with me i can feel their finger-tips stroke the darkness from my face and the music of their lips fills my pleasant resting-place in the ashes and the dust where i wonder as i lie servant of the eternal must Dreaming, dreaming pleasantly. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Dawn Love by Richard Middleton. Read for LibriVox.org by Eva Davis. Dawn Love. Not with my lips, O oh God, not with my eager hands, these purple seas were made and these enchanted lands it was not i who drew these breezes forth and called these stars to diadem the north it was not i who set her in this place and in a dream of dreams decreed her face i only stooped to serve her careless days bid the loud birds sing glad around delays to charm her ears and summer buds unfold the crimson petals from their hearts of gold to deck the earth her very feet have trod i sing the triumph of the artist god for when in dreams i wrought to make my heaven fair raised palaces of song and minarets of prayer domes of desire and secret halls of sin there was no vision walked my courts within like this through all my twilit halls there blew no song like this that burns my whole heart through down dreams upon your knees and pray to her to touch your weary eyes let no dream stir till she has passed she is so kind so wild so womanly so very much a child that she can make a living thing of sleep granting it lips to laugh and starry eyes to weep and she has made a living thing of me I feel the surge of earth, the rhythm of the sea. My heart is freshened with the dewy rains of dawn. The sunshine burns within my veins. For me the riotous seasons are unfurled. I am a grain of dust. I am the world. I know I have not made this perfect thing. Lord of a thousand songs, the song I cannot sing. Lord of a thousand dreams, this is no dream of mine master of many feasts i may not taste this wine but on the hills the perfect song is born and i arise from sleep to greet the morn end of poem this recording is in the public domain irene 
by Richard Middleton, read for LibriVox.org by Eva Davis. Irene. I was a singer in the days when Pan leapt through the roses in the month of June, and shook the petals down upon the noon, and through the quashy bracken glades I ran, dreaming no word of how the world began, nor grieving in the graveyards of the moon where pedants lie. I had a pipe, a tune, and the first pagan ecstasy of man. There passed me in the pleasant forest light fair forms of lovers trembling into rose that was not of the sun, and no man knows with what delirious tumult of delight their voices filled the branches, and the sight of their fine rapture conquered all my woes as I had bathed in that black stream that flows across the passionless paradise of night. It seemed that life was but a game to dare, the forfeit only death, and wandering across the piney hills they heard me fling a heart of hopeful music on the air, and there were roses, roses everywhere, and birds of tuneful voice and shining wing to carry love to God. The lips of spring had made the mouth of summer very fair. Love played with us beneath the laughing trees. We praised him for his eyes and silver skin, and for the little teeth that shone within his ruddy lips. The bracken touched his knees. Earth wrapped his body in her softest breeze, and through the hours that held no count of sin, we kept his court, until, above our din, night westward drove her glittering argosies. O oh, lovely days long dead, there falls on me in this dim world I may not understand an echo of your sweetness. In my hand one frail sad rose inspires eternity, with dreams that are no more, and from the sea that beats upon this grey perplexed land blows rumour of some merry drunken band that keeps your revel still in Arcady. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. One Summer's Day by Richard Middleton Read for LibriVox.org by recording person One Summer's Day She lay and smiled upon the hours While with a silver pipe of joy The river hurried on, a boy Had covered her with cuckoo flowers She let them stay as though she knew They could not hide her cheeks glad red it seemed that heaven was her bed and these but stars to wander through till with a little loving leap the river rose above the boat it girdled round her silver throat and kissed her laughing eyes asleep her hair was loosed upon the flood there fell a sun enchanted veil the glad waves plucked her cheeks grown pale tinged the quick waters with their blood the sun cast down his brightest beams upon the world to give the news Across the merry waves of ooze, Ophelia steers her bark of dreams. The birds took up the strain above, and flung it to the dimmest star. Oh, let us follow, follow far, the dear mad maid who died for love. Even to the grave, dear heart, but soon, too soon the song of morning dies. Too soon we lose in memories the radiant peace of afternoon. While yet the river sang beside, that knew no word of fear or doubt, we heard the Bedford bells breathe out the soft sad song of eventide. When I count up my hours of gold, these shall not be forgotten, sweet, and though time trample with his feet, roses and lilies manifold, if I have choice of all that seems, most precious here, this boon I choose, to see once more on merry ooze, Ophelia steer her bark of dreams. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Love's Mortality by Richard Middleton Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia Love's Mortality The night of nights drew to its tardy close, And through the dew the lilies soothed the rose With words of love immortal. 
till from the golden and desired portal the curtains of the night were plucked aside and dawn led forth my bride and forth she came with her young limbs and cool her eyes more clear than any windless pool to dance across the daytime crown weary life with garlands of her playtime and set a bud betwixt the lips of death that sweet might be his breath i know that luckless lovers do not die fashioning trifles for eternity of golden moments broken of sighs and tears and passionate words half spoken they may not rest but strew the bitter years with their immortal tears but swift upon my tired ears there fell rumour of moon-drunk star-lit philomel on magic copses flinging her song too amorous sweet for human singing and praising ever to her leafy sky our glad mortality winning the fierce fulfilment of my love come death the intolerable sky above no more my heart shall cover earth is too narrow for a happy lover with planets in his heart and in his hands immeasurable lands come death and free me from these earthy walls that heaven may hold our final festivals the white stars trembling under i am too small to keep this passionate wonder within my human frame i would be dead that god may be our bed i feel her breath upon my eyes her hair falls on me like a blessing everywhere i hear her warm blood leaping and life it seems is but a fitful sleeping and we but fretful shades that dreamed before that love and are no more end of poem this recording is in the public domain Any Lover, Any Lass by Richard Middleton Read for LibriVox.org by Recording Person Any Lover, Any Lass Why are her eyes so bright, so bright? Why do her lips control The kisses of a summer night When I would love her soul? God set her brave eyes wide apart And painted them with fire They stir the ashes of my heart To embers of desire her lips so tenderly are wrought in so divine a shape that i am servant to my thought and can no wise escape her body is a flower her hair about her neck doth play i find her colours everywhere they are the pride of day her little hands are soft and when i see her fingers move i know in very truth that men have died for less than love ah dear live lovely thing my eyes have sought her like a prayer. It is my better self that cries, Would she were not so fair. Would I might forfeit ecstasy, And find a calmer place, Where I might undesirous see Her too desired face. Nor find her eyes so bright, so bright, Nor hear her lips unroll. Dream after dream the lifelong night, When I would love her soul. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Welcome by Richard Middleton Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia The Welcome Against her coming I will make Brave chains of stars delight the trees And moonlit dew be gem the break And fire my verdant tapestries No lingering ray of sunlight mars The wonder of my solitudes Bewitch my shadowy fields, O stars And thou, O moon, enchant my woods and now the rapturous hour draws near birds flutter in the leafy street flowers raise their heads in sensuous fear that she may crush them with her feet with dew-blind eyes the roses weep she comes she will not come it seems the air is sick with scent of sleep and dust of long-forgotten dreams from many a fair enchanted grove the song-birds carol sweet and clear 
it is the very breath of love that stirs the charmed atmosphere and while blithe insects through the night go humming by on silken wings a deeper fullness of delight discovers all desirous things to-night i do not love alone the wind is lorn with amorous tunes and the pale lilies one by one grieve for the passion of dead noons the roses touch and weep no more casting their petals on the sod in crimson sacrifice before the altar of the sightless god and where pan squanders with his court love shall not spare the horned king with red lips drawn to wanton sport and teeth to bite and hands to cling and where the wood boys bathe and fling across the world their limbs made cool love tarries with his arms giving and there is trouble by the pool now is my passionate lifetime's core my moments touch eternity and all the things i dreamed before shall blossom in my blood and die once like a cloud of incense curled to some dim god the veil shall pass once i shall be the moving world before i break and change to grass for this my mother blessed her pain for this i wandered on her knees for this the sunshine and the rain the green earth and the glowing seas who blindly followed some far light that led me on through hopes and fears i shall fulfil my soul to-night and win a meaning for my years sing on o birds and thou o moon bewitch my woods to greet my queen death waits upon my life and soon i shall be but by having been stoop low o stars and render brave my life as an enchanted bower that i may keep within my grave the gleam of my immortal hour End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Last Hope by Richard Middleton. Recorded for LibriVox.org by Recording Person. The Last Hope. To crown the festival and tumult of the wine, O oh my beloved, may there fall silence the sweetest song of all for tired ears like mine. I crave an hour of rest. No more before I go, the crimson rose upon your breast calls me while on the mountain crest dawn wantons in the snow. Too tired to mock or weep the world that I have missed, love in your heaven let me sleep an hour or two before I keep my unperturbed tryst. The day is for the young, night holds my heart in pawn, but though my broken songs are sung, I see across the hills far flung the pennons of the dawn. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. ACM by Richard Middleton. Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. ACM. When I breathe no more, scent of love bound posies, and the August roses let their petals fall, when in my heart's core dream on dream reposes and my story closes past recall heart the winds that blow lightly over my leisure haply they shall measure my glad lifetime here laughing well we know love was all his treasure pain and pride and pleasure hope and fear i by death made brave shall not heed their blowing though the flowers are glowing that i praised above holding in my grave seed too fair for sowing knowledge past all knowing thee my love end of poem this recording is in the public domain epithalamium by richard middleton Read for LibriVox.org by Nima. Epithalamium. These are his years he will possess, your little flowers of white and red. Your every sweet enchanted tress will twine about him in his bed. The vision of your loveliness will comfort him 
till he is dead. His hands will touch you and your face, will feel his kisses while you sleep. The sweetness of your shy embrace will steal across the heavenly deep, where in a star-forsaken place I serve my foolish dreams and weep. Made free from doubt, he need not fight to win the much-desired land, nor seek to pierce beyond the night that shrouds this waste of salt and sand, granting you for your heart's delight the love that you can understand. My heart its mortal form outwears, my moments to the winds are flung, but now it seems these are his years, and being handsome, gallant, young, he will not vex you with his tears, or sing such songs as I have sung. But day and night, and night and day, his lips will tell the tales you know, and you will find them new all way, while on the lonely hills I go, dreaming of wanton stars at play, and wishing it were better so. The love that made you mine shall bear harsh fruit before the end of this, for in the darkness you shall hear an echo that is none of his, and you will droop with sudden fear beneath his fond, adulterous kiss. And while across the world I move, paying sad tribute to the moon, and breathing in her courts above the fatal music of our noon, lo, you shall hear his words of love trip lightly to my deathless tune. And you will know that once I set your eyes with gleaming stars and made your breast of pearls and roses wet with morning's kisses and betrayed the setting sun that I might get red for your cheeks that would not fade. But he will kiss your lips and say, the thing you know your whole life long, day after night, night after day, no word of right, no word of wrong, and you shall charm the hours away with the last echo of my song. End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Silent Lover by Richard Middleton Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia The Silent Lover I cannot sing, I have no words To love you, hate you, make you mine, To win your ear like mating birds, To brim your veins with wanton wine, But all my longing senses cry Their faltering, broken oratory. My words rehearsed, my songs new sung, I lost beneath this fierce suspense. I cannot sound with human tongue my heart's insurgent eloquence. Now of your lips, now of your eyes, now of your falling melodies. I have no words, but time shall prove this song of mine the best of all. My lips shall be as love's, for love shall make their silence musical and on some rapt enchanted night they shall reveal my heart's delight end of poem this recording is in the public domain love's freedom by richard middleton read for librivox dot org by sonia love's freedom to feel her shrink beneath my touch and keep an hour's unreason with the dancing moon to bid my enchanted senses thrill and swoon to kiss and long for breath and longing sleep o oh, mad white nights of old why should i weep your fallen hours i hear the self-same tune sung by the roses to an august noon that troubled once your star-bewildered deep this is not all of love for more than this the purer breezes of this gentler land bless me and make me glad where heaven is i see the palace of my mistress stand love is no victim for a wanton's kiss nor shall he be imprisoned by her hand end of poem this recording is in the public domain
last year's love by richard middleton read for librivox dot org by sonia last year's love the silver boy went down to meet the morn his eyes were azure and his lips were red and golden tendrils did his brow adorn and mimic sunbeams round his laughing head the misty meadows caught his cry of joy o oh, summer summer sang the silver boy she came to him across the dewy day with ruddy cheeks and shapen breasts aglow and all the mountains flung their mists away to see how love might greet the earth and know the song that is too sweet for mortal ears the song of songs that shall restore the years riot of fountains song of leaping streams and sombre music through the stately pines quickened the breathless passion of their dreams their veins were fraught with such enchanted wines as press olympus grapes their lips were set to their sweet task of kissing kissing yet o oh, summer summer thou hast kissed him cold his eyelids turn from loving and his store of shaken ringlets lose their early gold and are as dust his lips shall sing no more joy to the morn that calls him from his bed we knew no other love and he is dead there falls no echo from the dreaming trees the moonlit meadows have forgot his song these flowers were his azure eyes and these the crimson lips that summer knew too long young love is dead but these his elegy these mindful blossoms they shall never die end of poem this recording is in the public domain the unsuccessful lover by richard middleton read for LibriVox.org by recording person the unsuccessful lover why mourn the sweet you may not get the love you cannot keep the world has fairer lasses yet for boys who do not weep tomorrow's kisses shall repay all that you love and lose today her eyes are brighter than the moon they do not shine for you her lips with their enchanted tune have made the world anew but what's the use of lips like this mad lover if they will not kiss i would have taught her soon or late now many are son of man better instruct his ordered fate to choose another plan or guide the stars to heaven above than teach a woman how to love go out o oh boy across the earth the girls are there to touch who will not keep you from their mirth or tease you over much she will despise me be it so but ask her why she lets you go end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Dream by Richard Middleton. Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. The Dream. You came to me in sleep last night and stood beside my bed. Your hands were white, your feet were white, but oh, your cheeks were red. It is my guardian angel come to visit me, I said. You stooped and kissed me on my face. Your lips were cold as stone and in its secret resting-place my heart made dolorous moan for you were there with me at last and still i was alone night long i heard the passing bell and knew the mourners smart i heard a thousand churches knell the hour when we must part all night your icy kisses fell upon my grieving heart but lo the blood of conquered shame had filled your cheeks with red and roses molten out of flame quickened the speechless dead last night when my beloved came and kissed me in my bed end of poem this recording is in the public domain to ray by richard middleton read for librivox dot org by recording person to Rei. Boys in the sea may dive for silver pearls, or rob the spring of roses for their girls. What pearls may deck 
what roses can adorn the princess of my morn a thousand seas have flung their treasure down to kiss your feet a thousand springs have thrown their ivory buds to make your bosom white too radiant for my sight and now you ask me for an earth-born song when all the dreams my eager senses long to crown by day cry from these nights of mine for your lips charmed wine kiss me and ease this passionate unrest there are so many voices in my breast singing o oh, eyes that shine o oh, lips that part i cannot hear my heart kiss me and teach my voice my song shall take new wings to heaven for your beauty's sake and by your lips inspired will greet the birds with new triumphant words lovers may dare the aching winter skies for frosty stars to light their ladies eyes what star may deck what planet can delight the princess of my night end of poem this recording is in the public domain after love by richard middleton read for LibriVox.org by sonia after love let there be lust between us two my throat is harsh with too much singing of faint songs my lips have numbered all the flowers by road but you to whom but one far rose belongs may sing a better song than love's and fill my mouth with softer words than gardens thrill perfume your lonely rose of youth and crush my lips in ecstasy to stain it red and while we dream the wanton night will hush her errant birds and close about our bed will hang her starry curtains cool with dew that your soft limbs may touch and glimmer through and i shall feel your passion of hot breath strike on my lidded eyes and fill my hair with rumour of short nights when summoned death came not to cool the scorched and withered air but sleep betrayed her lover for a rhyme that droned incessant on the lips of time and we shall sleep to-night though not as they who tread some strange sweet story into dust and sing a while and lose the heart of day in childlike wanderings ours shall be lust more fierce than life than death more pitiless our dawn shall be an utter weariness yet let them go the loving and the glad and hold me in your arms till i am chill an autumn wonder made my childhood sad but something of my childhood lingers still and i am fain for toys take holiday a little while from wandering and play and i shall be the lover at your lips or now the thirsty babe that lies at morn upon your crowned breasts with what sweet sips it draws the honey forth ah to be born so very wise in ignorance and die unquiet for knowing nothing you and i or you shall lean upon my neck and speak soft sorrows for my death as you have missed by one short hour the joy that lovers seek and dream your crimson mouth as yet unkissed were crying for the moon god made me bold too late while all death left of me grew cold there shall be pain between us two and sound of broken sword and ill-remembered song and we shall lead him captive scourged and bound the dear blind boy who trembles for this wrong wrought at our hands his tender face is wet poor love but surely we shall not forget when the sad roses bow their heads to june and lilies weep beneath the summer sky for his sweet song and all the world in tune praise heaven for his mournful melody our dream shall have an end and we shall wake 
the western hills with sorrow for his sake end of poem this recording is in the public domain the blind cripple by richard middleton read for LibriVox.org by melanie t lo as i walked and nursed my bitter love i saw a man who lay beside the street god for some sin had smitten off his feet and wrought the blind white face that drooped above to such a shape of fear that they who passed flung him scant arms aghast and horror lingered in the dusty air and tumult of the street though lovingly from out the weary azure of the sky the sunshine fell upon his fading hair the while beside the quivering timid throng his thin lips breathed a song and they have said that even as the blood of this blind cripple is the crimson wine that greets the seasons in this heart of mine and wakes my body with its passionate flood calling o oh joy my joy thou art in vain the spring is come again my love my bitter love ah god that i were one with this poor patient suffering thing i should pay homage to my lord the king and he would touch my eyelids tenderly saying poor eyes that were too brave to weep yet knew no flower but sleep ah god that mine were such brave blood as this that leaps with life though his cropped limbs be stark and sets his pale lips singing in the dark for i have lost high heaven for a kiss and my poor spirit weeping to the wind is crippled lord and blind and well i know that it is he who climbs and he who sees for me no wonder gleams upon the mountain tops as idle dreams are my fond memories and my poor rhymes i can but fly and seek another place for envy of his grace end of poem this recording is in the public domain to the mall by richard middleton read for LibriVox.org by recording person. To the mole. O oh, tearful maids and merry, with little mouths that take two bites to eat one cherry, how fine a world you make! All joys and pains reproving that mar your pleasant strife. When I am done with loving, may I be done with life. I love you for your kisses, and yet I love withal those subtly teasing misses who will not kiss at all. I love you for your pleasure. I love you for your pain. Your smiles are all my treasure and your divine disdain. Your little hands that tremble in doing right or wrong. Your lips that can disassemble but cannot hide your song. Your careless feet that wander alike through earth and sky. A mine to win and squander and worship till I die. O oh, laughing maids and weeping with little hearts to take. Tired mortals from their sleeping and kiss the world awake. The golden moments proving, mistress or queen or wife, when I am done with loving, may I be done with life. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Artist by Richard Middleton, read for LibriVox.org by Eva Davis. The Artist. I am only a dream that sings in a strange, large place and beats with impotent wings against God's face. The darkness is all about, it hides the blue, but I conquer it with my shout and pierce it through. And the golden cities rise up till I am a space, and the earth is my drinking cup and my resting place. And the stars that wander above cry out, O oh, sweet, for mine are the wings of love and his silver feet and the stars that tremble below are cold for fear for mine are his lips of snow and his scarlet tear but the sound of my shouting dies and the shadows fall for death is upon the skies and upon us all 
the shadows fall and the still i am loath to sing i have wondered and kissed my fill on the lips of spring but the golden cities are gone and the stars are fled and i know that i am alone and i am dead no more than a dream that sings in the streets of space ah would my soul had wings or a resting place End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Faithful Poet by Richard Middleton Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson I've sung my song these many years And kissed my lass, but lo, My lips grow weary now, My eyes are fonder far of tears Than seeing girls' glad faces pain is mistress of my heart again still these two mournful moments prove no penitence for lo dear heart i do not know that there is anything but love to tune a song or make amends for our sad lives and tuneless ends end of poem this recording is in the public domain regret by Richard Middleton, read for LibriVox.org, by recording person. Regret Silver rose was the morning, his breast was strewn with pearls, spoil of the dew-bright cherry that danced along the spray, and I saw the sun of beauty shine out in the eyes of girls who bowed their limbs to the morning for love of the primrose way. The splendour of waking beauty had filled my world with joy, Red for the roses and green for the hills, whence the skies depart. A secret song for the maiden, a silver pipe for the boy, to echo and bring her blithely to his arms, to his lips, to his heart. Ah, to dream and awake, to have seen and to see no more. The roses falter and perish, the clouds droop low on the hill, and the secret song of the maiden, that was so sweet before, is still with the pipe of the boy, as my echoing heart is still. They come not the shining hours with their treasure of green and gold, trooping across the meadows as they came once on a day. Mine the monotonous years and the sorrow of growing old, mine to weep for the morning far down on the primrose way. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Dorothy by Richard Middleton. Read for LibriVox.org. By recording person. Dorothy. She stole across the wood by night. The branches swayed to let her pass. Dorothy in the moonlight, treading the dewy grass. And so she came to the quiet pool, in whose enchanted deep the white moon makes her body cool, and tired stars lie asleep. She loosed her girdle's golden link, her soft robes touched her feet, and wakeful birds that came to drink fell dumb, she was so sweet. She saw her image dreaming there, more glad and calm than she, and a great comfort filled the air and the soul of Dorothy. For mirrored in the shining well, the wind might hardly stir. Her ivory body rose and fell, her sad lips smiled at her. Ah, happier than the starry night, and gladder than the day, Dorothy in the moonlight threw the world away. And in the pool she lay at rest, quiet and deathly fair, the gentle waves her throat caressed, and combed her golden hair. Her eyes saw other stars than those that wandered in the sky. Her heart had found another rose than loves that would not die. The moonlight was her shroud, she lay upon a regal bed. The queen who flung the world away, who died and is not dead. For ever in my dreams by night, I wait to see her pass. Dorothy in the moonlight, treading the dewy grass. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The New Dawn by Richard Middleton. Read for LibriVox.org by B. Heath. She can be found at Binkerism.com. Take all my dreams, yes, take them all. The splendid fabric of my play, flowers of the starry carnival. But spare my little hour of the day. Leaving my lilies tall and white, the tremble in the morning's dew. I need no blossoms of the night, no moonlit buds for my delight, or sombre groves view. 
I wandered many and many a time, where sleep lit lanterns threw their beams, and gathered blooms of scented rhyme, to fashion garlands for my dreams. Why seek, I thought, a wakeful flower, when these I hold are fairer far, that thrill across the midnight hour, the shadows of Titania's bower, and praise the evening star. But then she came, and lo, it seemed, I had forgotten life too long, God had perfected while I dreamed, another world, another song. Twas not to ask in what shy mood the white day found her standing there, I, who had never understood, what might be bad, what might be good, I knew that she was fair. I think God meant my eyes to see how fair she was, I think my voice was made to praise the harmony of his labor and rejoice. And well I know these tears of mine, because she lies not on my heart, more than his roses red with wine, more than his myriad stars that shine, acclaim his perfect art. For all the rich and curious things that I have found within my sleep are not beside this child that sings among the heather and the sheep. And I, who with expectant eyes have fared across the starlit foam, see through my dreams a new sunrise to conquer unachieved skies and bring the dreamer home. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. To EMD by Richard Middleton. Read for LibriVox.org by Recording Person. To EMD. After love's bitter words be mine, the skies and tranquil fields of this dream haunted place, the gentle welcome of your sad sweet eyes, the kindness and the pity of your face. My little sister, be it mine to see, in these remote and disillusioned hours, you in your garden of imagined flowers. Dreaming your tender dreams to comfort me. Not in these glades should luckless lovers weep, Or mourn their passions in these meadows dim. Shaped like a flower new moulded out of sleep, I see your body marvellously slim. Gleam in the dusk, I hear the murmurous song Of drowsy childhood charm the listening night. And with an old dispassionate delight, My heart takes rest that love has claimed too long. Ah, child so kind to me, I have been far, across the world that never was my own, seeking a cruel and resentful star, but now in calmer hours than I have known. Your spirit leads me on through moor and hill, to those quiet fields where dreamy children play. Keep me from loving, blessed child, and stay, within my heart, my little sister still. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. To Time by Richard Middleton, read for LibriVox.org by Eva Davis. To Time Time, you old dotard, prosing endlessly to bore a graceless world, and leave our sky sadder than rain or any wise man's tears. I crave no part in your monotony, but ask one favor, being born to die. Grant me my moments. You may keep your years. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Dreamer Wakes by Richard Middleton. Read for LibriVox.org by B. Heath. She can be found at Binkerism.com. If all the world's my dream, why do I dream so ill? These stars that do not gleam, this wind forlorn and chill, that discontents the years shall not allay my tears then dream my heart no more let that dim power who made our primal dust restore his plan and unafraid will spread our sightless wings into the truth of things they will not hurt so much as this vain dream of mine this feast no man may touch this draught of bitter wine be wakeful then o heart and bid the dream depart under the morning star i shall arise and know who led my steps so far and set me dreaming so and to life's chorus then my lips shall cry amen end of poem this recording is in the public domain the dream that has no end by richard middleton recorded for LibriVox.org by jude the winter trails its weary hours the night begins ere day is over but mine are all the summer flowers i am that prince of fools a lover yet passion will not so inspire my days 
that I may keep my treasure, slave of an incomplete desire. I won my dream and took my pleasure. Life has found many flowers to fill, my heart too eager to disdain them. I kissed my girl and did not kill, I held her hands and did not stain them. And that is why she haunts me now, in sombre hours God made for sleeping, with her serene indifferent brow and her soft eyes for ever weeping. Ah, God, that I as other men might love and love no more, to sever a fragrant blossom now and then, to kiss and be at peace for ever. But I am faithful in this wise, that having found, I still must keep her, with her cold heart and tender eyes, till dawn brings solace to the sleeper. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Boy World by Richard Middleton Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson This is a young world with blossoms in his hair, The green grass newly curled that squanders everywhere. He was born yesterday, he is too young for sorrow, He sings the hours away with ballads of tomorrow. Only a little lad with nothing to forget, Knowing nor good nor bad, who has not found them yet. We must not blame him. No, wisdom will follow after. The things that hurt us so are hidden from his laughter. Lord of the springtide joys, unknown of doubt or shame, we are the careless toys that help him in his game. He bends us to his will. Our prayers are checked, half-spoken. Youth will be master still, though all his toys are broken. He sings his song and plays. How might he understand we count the weary days beneath his eager hand? He laughs above his sport. We tremble at the thunder, and all our plans are not who only wait and wonder. Yet this is ours to trace through field and copse and hill and beauty of his face that smiles upon us still. So fair he is and young, his joy is ours to cherish, though all our songs are sung and all the singers perish. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Serenade by Richard Middleton. Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. Serenade. By day my timid passions stand Like begging children at your gate, Each with a mute appealing hand To ask a dole of fate. But when night comes, released from doubt, Like merry minstrels they appear, The stars ring out their hopeful shout, Beloved, can you hear? They dare not sing to you by day Their all-desirous song, or take The world with their adventurous lay For your enchanted sake. But when the night wind wakes and thrills the shadows that the night unbars, their music fills the dreamy hills and folds the friendly stars. Beloved, can you hear? They sing words that no mortal lips can sound. Love through the world has taken wing, my passions are unbound. And now, and now, my lips, my eyes are stricken dumb with hope and fear. It is my burning soul that cries, Beloved, can you hear? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Butterfly by Richard Middleton. Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. The Butterfly. Along the lane, as I passed by, I saw a sulphur butterfly fanning with newly powdered wing the laughing breezes of the spring from brown to green from green to blue lightly the fond adventurer flew and so i thought if she were here 
Christine would charm the waking year. Ah, heart, that all unwilling stirs to greet the song that is not hers, the song my quick unfaithful blood sings for the breaking of the bud, and earth made young again, shall you, whom all the winter time held true, change for a yellow bribe and wait to praise the traitor at his gate? The flowers of spring, his azure skies, are not more lovely than her eyes, glad with unfathomable dreams. The music of his winds, his streams, with her soft lips may not compete, that grant the echo's silver feet to foot it on the hills. The spring hath no such songs as she can sing. I may not hear her in this place, or watch the ripples in her face, where glad emotions play, or find the loveliness that makes me blind. Not in the happy fields that know the beating of her heart I go, nor where her careless little feet tread on the earth and make it sweet the pageant of the summer comes with waving flags and joyful drums with pomp of leaf and pride of flower and many a green and cheerful hour under the wide and shining arch i see the blue procession march and on the wind of spring is borne the perfume of a summer morn the summer comes and winter dies and now the new-born butterflies proclaim the spring i saw one pass a primrose blossom through the grass but heart the joyous insect brings no message on its powdered wings for you and me who yet must stay far from our love this winter day end of poem this recording is in the public domain Christine Revisited by Richard Middleton Read for LibriVox.org by Recording Person Christine Revisited Within the garden of my heart once more She walks and wakes the echoes of my heart With her glad lips grown kinder than before Welcome, beloved, nevermore depart My eyes have wearied for you and my days Have seemed but sorrow lacking your sweet ways Nay, though I be a captive for all time Heap, love, your chains upon me, bind me close. With your fierce fetters, still my happy rhyme, Shall sound the praise of the eternal rose, That shares my prison, and within my bars, God shall bring forth a thousand singing stars. I have been free, and had all heaven and hell, For prison, until my piteous hands grew sore, Striking the voiceless walls, now it is well, Even though I be a captive evermore. My grateful song shall fill my hiding place to find eternity hath so sweet a face. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Nocturne by Richard Middleton. Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. Nocturne. When sleep puts on the cloak of death, and in the city masquerades earth's tired children fight for breath and they who sought the dreamy glades fall panting on the road and lie like clods beneath the sombre sky but when death comes like gentle sleep and takes our children to his breast our weary eyes forbear to weep it is so very good to rest quietly in the dreamy corn until the breaking of the morn and a poem this recording is in the public domain